Hello everyone, hope you're doing fine. It's been like a year, I think, since I last released a kick tutorial and it's time for an update. Because in the last year, uh, I figured out that I need to be more at ease with kick making, understand a bit better how it works and find some new ways to create kicks and recreate kicks. Because yeah, in the last couple of months, like maybe the last year overall, I've been working on ways to be able to consistently end up with good kicks and also be able to recreate or be close enough to existing kicks from famous artists on the scene. And uh, yeah, I did that. I searched for that for weeks and weeks and weeks and I figured out a way. And then I tried that way to recreate kicks from famous artists and we did that together with the people on discord in the voice chat sometimes so that they could share ideas and also give inputs on like yeah i would imagine more of that kind of sounds or you know that kind of stuff and it's always interesting to share with other people and have all the community looking for clues and ideas how to recreate the sound so yeah basically i've spent a lot of time making kicks and I think I can nowadays create kicks more consistently and have good kicks more consistently. So I want to share this technique with you so that you can also create kicks more consistently and not rely only on uh, sample packs and or a project that works once, but not uh, much more like my previous kick tutorial was. This one is way more complete and I will show you that just within this tutorial we'll have one actual good kick from start to finish and then I will show you that you can like have infinite from that base. Just by fiddling with a couple of parameters it's really easy you'll see. But anyway, buckle up and we start. So before we go any further I will give you a listen to the result of this tutorial. So if you follow this tutorial from start to finish, you'll have exactly that sound. I will also show you the result of what's inside the FLP available on Gumroad. The sound is slightly different, but the very same technique has been used. As I will explain later in the tutorial, you can easily change the overall sound of the kick by changing some very small values here and there. Don't worry, you'll see that uh, later in the tutorial. So I'll show you the result of the FLP that will be available on Gumroad for 10 bucks. And also I'll show you all kinds of different kicks I've made in the past couple of months using that same technique exactly. So just changing values and all the different sounds that you can generate using that. So here is the result that will be in this tutorial. If you follow everything, you should have this sound. This is what will be in the FLP on Gumroad. So you can hear different sound, but the same technique applies. And here, all kinds of kicks I've made using that same technique. So yeah, as you can hear, you can have totally different sounds using that exact technique every time, just changing some values here and there, but don't worry, you'll see everything in the tutorial. So yeah, time to start. So yeah, the first thing I will do is set the BPM at 155. You can do it at 150, it will work exactly the same because the technique we will use today is basically uh, good on any uh, BPM. I will remove the limiter on the master and as in any kick tutorial the first thing that you have to do is create a kick and to do that I can use serum here I will disable this use the sub oscillator put the volume to the max and here I will oops, create a nice shape something kind of like this that will like occupy the first fourth of the whole grid here and do this kind of shape which usually kind of works well for me go to the matrix here go to lfo one here go to global master tune and then here go to 40 and make sure it's unipolar once this is done you have like a very basic kick so here i'll set it on the g already put it in the playlist because we will loop quite a lot on uh, that thing and uh, also make sure that you put that LFO and envelope in envelope mode sorry so yeah you have like 
a basic cake. Now the next thing that you can do is distort that thing because we are making hard style. Hard style mix means you need a lot of distortion. So here I will go to distortion, go to zero square, distort it a lot and you have this. And you have your hardstyle kick ready. You can now use it in all of your tracks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one. No, just kidding. So yeah, you will assign this to uh, like an insert and that's where the uh, actual work will begin. And the first thing that you can set up already is an Oxford inflator, a Pro Q and a free send. There we go. So we have Oxford Inflator. The first thing that you will do here is make sure that the sound is already clipping a little bit before going into uh, the Pro Q and the Send. So add 5 dB here and the effects at 80% and that's it. For the Oxford Inflator here in the Pro Q, what you can do is already set it to 30 dB and have that kind of shape at minus 25 or something around 26,000 or something just to remove a lot of the high end of the sound because the high end will be covered by something else it's a bit more what we are looking for here and the next thing is you can create already a point here at 200 uh, hertz and set the shape to 96 db per octave and here the type of filter the type of uh, point to a uh, low shelf and make sure the gain is at zero because this will be what will create the distortion uh, in the sound and the fruity sound will cover that uh, in a little bit then that thing which is basically the tail uh, we will send it to another insert here which will be like the full kick without the reverb so that means that the, the punch will go in here, all the noises and like, uh, I would say that like the, the punch reverb will also go in there, but they will not come out as the reverb because it just like will enter a clipper again and it will be crushed together with the uh, tail we just created in uh, Serum. And in that new uh, insert, what you can add is an Oxford inflator again. Here we'll just put it to minus one, just so we do not like reach the max uh, level right away and uh, you can also set up a pro queue i will show you some precise or more or less precise uh eqing i've done and it's one i use on all of my kicks you're not forced to do that it's not mandatory one thing that would still do and that i would consider kind of mandatory is here i will have a low cut 48 dB per octave at 180 and I would put it on side so that means that we will cut everything that is like on the side all the side signal for everything below 180 uh, Hertz because we do not need that most of the time especially uh, since it's low end and that hardly ever needs that much side information that's what we, i do not like cut it higher still have a little bit here in the mid in the low mid range high low range i do not know how to call that but there and uh the next two points i will create is just some eqing i like on my kicks you're not forced to do that it will work perfectly fine if you do not do that but it's just a matter of taste so here i will put it on uh, both channel and it's will be at 340 around 340 and i will set here the uh, eq on 30 db and go to minus 20 here just remove a lot of the these frequencies and like have a sharper kind of uh shape here so let's find the right key ah it's not really there more like there there-ish and create an another one, but just here, put it up here just to bring back some of these frequencies here. Because if you lose so much of them here, you will lose a lot of power in the kicks because uh, some of the harmonies of the harmonics, sorry, of the, the, the sub will play here. So this is an EQ I use most of the time. You can 
forget about these two if you do not like them you can remove them it will work also just a matter of taste but i use that in my setup and then once i'm done with that i will put again an oxford inflator native put it on minus two because that will be the final volume i want my kick to be out with it uh, at because then we still need to add that nice uh punch reverb and be able to have some uh some room for it so yeah uh, this one is basically just to make sure that there is no peak uh, frequencies coming out of this because sometimes it can happen. And yeah, that's the basic setup. The last thing you can still do is here link that to one final kick insert. And in this one, again, you can uh, put just a basic Oxford inflator, but do not put anything extra in here just to make sure that it clips the output. That's basically the whole point of that in case the reverb like make it clip that's the only purpose of that so yeah we have our basic setup we have all the effects that we need at least for the tail we'll add some more for the punch and stuff but like for the tail it's all and now we can actually start to shape the kick so shaping the kick the first thing that you want to do and this is one of the important part uh nowadays to make a kick you need to have one signal that will completely clip and that's how you create this nice and crunchy distortion and also you want some movement in that kick and the way you create that movement is by uh, changing the way the sounds clip meaning uh, changing the amount of clipping you ha have happening on your sound and to do that an easy way I found is by basically uh, create an automation clip on the gain here for the um, for that point we created that will like actually define the movement on the low end but the more low end the louder the low end the more it will clip in the end so what I will do is create an automation clip on that so if you do not know I will show you a small tip on how to create automation on anything quickly and easily so when you're in FL Studio, what you can do is click here on that button and then wiggle with the knob you want to create an automation on and then right click on that thing, create an automation clip. It will basically remember whatever is the last buttons or when I, I said buttons, because like as soon as you click on this, everything that you touch, it will consider that it has to record the reference to. So this is an easy way to create the automation script if you didn't know. Now we have our automation ready. What I will do is count six small uh, time marker here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So on the sixth one, what I will do is create a nice ramp going up here. Type in value uh, 0 0.75, usually that's my go-to. And then I will have somewhere like one, two, three, four, five, I think somewhere here, usually. I'll go down to 0 0.55 and have that kind of shape on the automation. We just make it a bit wider so that you can see properly. So this will create this kind of sound. And you can hear already that there is uh, some uh, movement going on and that's what we want here. We want that kind of movement happening, but uh, that's kind of dull so far. It's like a really lame sound and it's not sounding very nicely because uh, it just sounds like a weird squarish sound, uh, a little bit distorted and that's basically it. So we want to have something extra. And usually in most tutorials, that's where uh, people will start uh, fiddling with uh, peaks in frequencies, then distortion, then peaks, then distortion. That's the old way of doing the kicks, or at least uh, that's exactly the way I learned back in the days, uh, 2010 or something. But I found a way that is actually uh, interesting in terms of uh, unlimited actions and uh, potential and the way I do that is by basically instead of doing some distortion stuff here I can just do everything and have some weird sound going on here in Serum 
and that weird sound being clipped will create some nice tail, basically. And the way I do that, I will use some precise uh, things here. That's just some stuff I found out while doing the prep stuff for the preparation for this tutorial. Uh, you're not forced to do exactly the same. You will have some good results with a lot of different values there. But this is one set of values that I found worked well for this tutorial. But I will also show you some uh, fiddling and stuff you can do to have a shit ton of uh, different tails. So yeah, here I will activate the oscillator A and I will go grab the odd pass. Basically, first tip, what you can do is use the spectrals or the digital ones or even the analog one, but I tend to play a lot with the digital and uh, spectral wavetables because they have some weird sound going on. I said I would go for some precise value. The precise value I'll go here for the wavetable position is 60 on this specific uh, wavetable. Then I will edit and here I will uh, go for morph, spectral, and I will close it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is here have the random set back to zero. And I will activate the second oscillator and do the same random to zero and here the uh, wavetable position to 160. And uh, no, first select the spectral, uh, digital, sorry, such crank, and here the position to 160. So you have these two things that will interact with the sub to create a nice texture or a nicer texture, so I say. So it sounds now like this. start to have some kind of like uh, texture and graininess to the sound which is exactly what we are looking for. The next step is to uh, emphasize all that. The way I will do that is first I will set up here in the effects section a couple of things. The first one being uh, some hyper dimension with a mix like pretty low like 15-20%. Here I use 17 uh, good enough, it's just to add some uh, stereo information. The rate to zero and the detune to something like 20, 25, something like that, something in between. And uh, the flanger also will be used here with a rate of zero, the depth around 70%, something like that, the feed to 55% or something. And the phase for the key we are using here, which is a G, I found uh, 111 to be a nice, compromise and the mix at like 67 68% it's enough now it sounds like this so you can hear a lot of uh, stereo information it will be fixed uh, in a while don't worry the last thing here in this section that you can do is add a multiband compressor with a ratio of 1 to one and the threshold to minus 29, minus 30, something like that. And now we have this. So it's not yet fancy, but we start to have like a more uh, clipped sound. We feel that everything is now like forced to live together in a way. And it's not yet the perfect result. What we need now to improve all that is to create some nice peak in a filter to emphasize the distortion and the sound of these two so what i will do here is activate a and b and have the high pass filter on 24 db and uh here we'll just play around with the values but 25 27 28 percent for the drive is something good enough the resonance about like 84% is good and the frequency here you can fiddle around until you find a frequency that sounds nice but for this example I will use 561 that's a sweet spot for these wavetable to work together and with the overall sound and now we have something that sounds like this it's missing something I do not feel enough these two inputs so I will put their volume to 100% it will be clipped anyway so we just like emphasize some of these layers and 
you can start to hear like a nice tail coming in here, like the the graininess of the tail is starting to get out. Uh, the last two things I will do here is uh, kind of create something that would be kind of a full kick with a tonal and the tail, but you will not use the tonal in the end. It will just be used to create some uh, reverb, tonal, tonal reverb and to layer that together with the actual tail. So yeah, I will show you how I do that. Uh, and it's basically the same idea that will be used whenever I will create the actual uh, tonal. So here, I will create this kind of shape so the first fourth of the uh, uh, of the LFO here will not be used, and we will set this up on the volume here. So basically, that means that there there is no sub layer coming in. It's only these two oscillators that are not really sub layers because here the filter cuts everything below that uh, 561. Uh, frequency. So basically that means that at the beginning of the sound there will be no sub, which means that the distorted sound coming in out of coming out of these two oscillators will be playing. So now we have that kind of sound. And now you can feel that we are approaching an actual uh, tail and an actual kick. Last thing I like to do, it's not mandatory, you could use that thing you could use that thing as is is i will create a shape for the uh filter frequency to move just to create some more movement in there and here we'll pick like that we'll give the the punch like a more weepy sound <laughs> So we are nearly there. There is still one thing that I will do here, and it's uh, when I will uh, actually start to explain all the things you can change to change the tone and the feel of the tail, is I will change the face of these wave tables. For this one, I will use 177, and for this one, I will use six. These are values, again, that works well with these two wavetables whenever I've been experimenting and whenever I've been training and prepping everything for this tutorial. But that's where you can change the value to have a different sound. I will show you and then I will go back to these values because that's the one uh, I liked for this tutorial to have. But I, I will show you exactly what it does uh, afterwards. <laughs> So now we have something that kind of sounds like a full kick. It's kind of muffled, but it's on purpose. And uh, we can start working with that. The first thing I will do is create that punch reverb that I said earlier. To do that, I will create here, uh, insert here, sorry, an Edison. And I will put it before the uh, EQing so that we have the raw sounds coming out of uh, Serum plus the Oxford Inflator native playing. I will set it up on on play mode and I will select here two full uh, bar uh, beats. Sorry, I'll start recording twice. Yeah, like that. Why twice? I will explain in a minute. So I will just keep here the punches and the uh, silence. So here I will remove that and I will remove from here all the way to here and I think there is a small so I can select everything go on the I had a water drop tool here just to activate the blur option in Edison blur that thing make sure to trim and normalize it now we'll set it in the playlist that sounds like this that's basically some noise but that are based on the punch of the kick. Assign it on a specific insert. I will call that uh, tail noise. 
I will apply a ProQ to look at that thing pretty high. Something like that. And I will link that insert to and root it to the full kick no verb here. So root to this track only. And the last thing I will do is here select the region I need, so this one, and automate volume. And here I will start shaping the volume of that thing the way I like it. So usually what I would do is some kind of shape like this. And we can remove it on the punch because we do not need that. It's only for the tail. Now we have something like this. So now it adds this nice uh, crunchiness at the end of the kick. It's not all that will be uh, present there. And you can change also the feel by changing here the automation. But that's the basic like uh, sound that we'll use as the tail. And basically, now we are done with the tail. That's all the basics that we need. The next step will be to create the punch. And then once the punch is created, we will change some very small stuff to improve everything altogether. Um, yeah, I said we are finished. Actually, no, we still have one small thing to do is here that through this end we've set up earlier but not did anything with it just create an, an automation clip on the dry signal and here on the six bar here have a nice ramp up basically this is the space for the punch and this will be the tail and when you play it alone you can hear that it sounds like a tail so the tail is done for now next we need some punch the punch as i said in my previous tutorial is a grain or a tunnel a transient and a low end and i found some samples that you can use that are working well for the transient and the low end if you do not want to create them uh, from scratch using uh, a synth and for the tunnel it's kind of the same technique is like take any sound and distort it enough to have a nice tonal but here what I will do is basically just clone the kick we just created I will assign this to its own insert call that uh, punch tonal and uh, this will be outputted here somewhere in another track that will then be sent to the full kick without the reverb because uh, that means uh, these three things will be used actually for the full punch and then we can manage the volume of the full punch here before entering the uh, full kick insert here the first thing i will do is already set up a pro cue cut the low end because we do not need any low end but i will not cut them too high like somewhere around uh, around one uh, 90 or 200 hertz is enough. What I will do next is create a new uh, point here. Set it to low cut again. Make sure that the uh, uh, the filter mode is on uh, mid side. Put it on side 48 dB and then cut it a bit higher. Because here sometimes a lot of the a lot of stereo information happens and it's kind of making everything muddy and not clean. And basically once this is done, the last thing you could do is EQ if there are some frequencies that are not needed uh, in the punch. But in this case, I will leave it as is for now. And I will uh, create also a through descend, create an automation, an automation clip on uh, the dry signal and just keep like the beginning of the sound because this is the tail this is the punch and when you overlap these two basically they cross each other and that's what we want here and last but not least uh, we will create a note here set it here and basically now we should have something that sounds a bit more like a kick
but that's still not perfect i will change this sponge but uh before i go any further i will just create a nice ramp up here why because here the transient will uh, take the space so we do not need much more information here the transient will take that space and here what you can do is basically play around in serum to find some nice uh, sound for your punch exactly the same way that we did for the for the tail you can play around with different sounds here like different position different uh, like different wave tables for this tutorial i will use the reezy mess and i will find a nice uh waveform somewhere here and uh find the right phase uh, i don't remember exactly the values i use but here i will just fiddle around i know it's with these two and uh i kind of remember that here the the phase is 308 and here the position is 198 i think and here the uh, filter frequency is 740 and the resonance you can go all the way to the max for the actual punch so now it sounds kind of like this i do not like that movement for this kick so i will remove all the modulation we have set up for that so this automation here we remove that <laughs> Yeah, I will remove the sub also just to have that nice and like row sound, the row distortion here without any clipping going on. So that's kind of okay, like that. So what I can do now is just create the nice uh, reverb for that. So again, I will just pull uh, Edison. Have this this one ready here. I will select this area here. Put it on on play. Here I can select everything past this point and blur it and again boom boom add it here add it to the playlist and select back the region we need and that thing I will set it to its own uh, mixer I will call that a tonal verb uh, I will set it here which is after like the let me reorganize that so this will go in here the transient and the punch will go there and be output it here but that thing will go into the full kick no verb because it will be crushed together with the tail and then i will also set it here on the uh, final kick because this is like the clean dry signal of that uh, reverb without any extra processing so it sounds like this now. It's still missing something, which is some shaping. I'll shape the volume of that. And basically what I will do is just create a nice ramp up here. And basically we have the tonal, one tonal together with it, its reverb. We still need now a transient and a punch and to do these two things it's not too complex and it's something that everybody can do because i will give you two samples that works well one for the uh, transient and one for the low end of the punch and you just copy all of my settings and basically you are good to go uh, like until the end of times so here for the transient i will use a snare that is in the basic packs of fl studio so if you go in fl studio in the browser you go to packs drums snare and you have the smigen uh smigen i do not know how to call that smigen snare it sounds like this it's like kind of tonal in, on its own also and what i will do is create 
a small shape here that will work and that will only cover this space. To do that, trim the sample out to shorten it and give it that shape and then play with the length until it reach the length that you want. So we have now something that sounds like this, it's like really snappy. Next thing I will do is play with the pogo, clip it a little bit, so 1% clip here, so you activate clip and boost. And then I will pitch it up an octave, just to have like the peak frequency higher in the spectrum. That's a bit more what we are looking for. And uh, then what you can do is assign it to its own mixer insert, route it to the global, I will call that global punch here. And uh, this I will call it uh, transient. In my previous tutorial, if I remember correctly, I use like a transient shaper and stuff. We will not use that here. We'll just use a simple EQ. And with that sample, it's actually having enough snappiness on its own, so it does not need any extra and processing, in my opinion. So here I will uh, look at it, that thing at 200, and I will boost some frequency somewhere around here, like uh, wherever the peak of uh, the sample is. And probably something like plus 15 or something. It'll be a lot, but will work don't worry uh, here I'll change that thing to like 36 to have something more like this and give it a nice shape or a nicer shape should I say and here I will also remove some frequencies down here because some of these are like pretty harsh so I will get rid of them and sometimes I feel like there is a bit too much uh, not tilt, tilt shelf but uh, ba -ba bell too much high end so i'll just like reduce it a little bit and change the shape to my liking so now we have a transient that should sound okay it sounds okay, we can feel that there are there is any transient here and it's actually clicking and stuff, so that's what we want. Next step is to have the punch low end. And to have that, it's again a sample, a bass sample from FL Studio. So if you go to pack, drums, kicks, and then you take the FPC one kick and set it like this, you have everything you need to be able to work. I will just do two small operation here. First, I will move it to the left one click here and here. Get it uh, to be longer than the actual end of the punch. So the punch should end here. It's just one tick longer just to make sure that it's fading properly into the uh, sub layer, the tail layer, should I say. And here I will just cut it so that there is a transient and then only there is a punch. What I will do is here create that kind of shape on this side, like somewhere here. And I will do the same on the other side. So we have the thing going in like up and down. And two things I found out worked pretty well on this is getting up one summit on here. So we'll again lengthen it a little bit and play with the pogo here just a little bit to change a bit the shape of it. Like found this thing to work pretty well. The value does not have to be overly precise. It's just a punch. It's just some low ones that we'll use. So don't worry too much about these uh, like values. Just it's not that precise here, like the pogo is not that precise. I think that's pretty much it for here. So what you can do is assign it to its own mixer insert and here your low and punch. And here just two small things that we'll do is add a fast disk without changing anything. 
and then we'll just add a pro cube and I will just high cut the shit out of it until like this point somewhere like 102 or something and I will also uh, get rid of some of the frequencies like here something like that and that thing will go in here and then goes in here so this is the full punch and actually this is a full kick and that's where the fun begins you have the full kick now and you can actually start to have some fun and that's why i set up that thing like that that's uh, actually the very interesting part i wanted to show you because now you have one kick and out of that one kick you can have like ten thousand of them with without changing anything in here all of this you can close and you will not see that again you do not need to do anything in there anymore everything will happen let me clean that thing off everything will happen mostly um, in these two serums with setup and actually it's even better than that it's maybe not happening in these two serums it can happen in any sound and that's the interesting part in my opinion because basically what we are doing here is take a sound that is kind of weird and dull as uh, it is on it on its own like sounds like this yeah, kind of forgot to put everything else in envelope mode so we have that weird kick going on it's kind of like dull and not finished and stuff and by just inputting it inside the tail here it creates all the nice movement and everything we need so that means that if we use any sound and try to input it inside this it could work so one thing i will uh tell you to do is save that preset i already did that Save that preset, go on a new uh, insert, uh, on a new mixer insert here, open serum effects, reload that preset you just saved. So here it, I call that like kick tutorial, I think. Yeah. And root that thing into the tail. And now you can input any sound in that. Uh, in that uh, mixer it will take all the nice uh, widener stuff here so the hyper dimension and the distortion and stuff and also the compressor and um, yeah it will uh, make it possible for you to input any sound I will just do that uh, here for you it's not the right one here I want the tail so I'll just copy that into this one I'll disable this I will set it to the right mixer insert so the 12 one here and now just take any preset you have here like I'll take this one I do not know what it sounds like uh, what is possible is that I need to Uh, move it to a different octave because depending on the preset it's not on the same octave and uh, I should have a different kick not working properly probably because there is some delay here going on so not working go to the next one not 
Not working, go to the next one. And try a lot of them. This one could work, for instance. I'll make sure that there is no reverb. I will remove the randomness and see what it sounds like. Not really happy with this one. Try a different one. This one is actually working, it's another a different kind of kick. But yeah, long story short, you can use any sound and input it into this chain and it might work. Or easier. What I do is like still keep that base preset we created and just move around inside this thing and move some small stuff around and that's uh, where I will show you all the things you can change to have different tastes on your kicks. So yeah, you have the one we created. Uh, the one we created is good enough, but let's say you want a different taste, you can change maybe the filter here. See, now it changed. The, the way the distortion work is a bit different. Well, let's say we can change the position, the wave table position here. Or the phase. Or you can shift the wave table completely. And basically by just changing these things you can have like all kinds of different kicks and if it's not enough you can also here change the shape here. And yeah, so you can have now different tails and stuff just by getting that thing to the same chain every time. And I've made like a lot of kicks exactly using this technique, this chain. Um, I will just show you one small thing on the, the tail. Remember this uh, EQ, I will disable it so you can hear the difference with and without. <laughs> So now you have like a full stereo stuff and all that, it's not uh, really good. And I will now uh, reactivate it, but just keep the uh, low cut thing, but disable the two other points that I created for the nice dip and uh, frequency fix, I would call that, that I've made. Whenever I hear that, I feel like there is a bit too much information here, so that's why I always do this. Leave some more room here for like the synth to hit in, like the, the main synths can hit in that uh, frequency range. So it's interesting to have some space here, in my opinion. It's not uh, everybody that does it like that and it's not mandatory again, but depending on the sound that you end up with uh, from the serum might not be needed. But in this case, more than needed, in my opinion. So yeah, for the tail, that's basically it. Uh, now you can also uh, do some work on the punch and I will show you what you can change to have different tastes in the punch. Basically, same rule applies. 
the positions, the phase here will uh, have an impact. If you move the volume of one of the two uh, oscillators, it, was, it will also give a different taste. Uh, the filter frequency, the resonance of the filter, the fatness of the filter, but most of the time uh, I do not fiddle much with the fatness here. It will change. And also the kind of filter you use for the uh, punch can have a big impact because punch nowadays you can basically use some weird and any kind of filter, especially like comb filter, works nicely for punches. It's just a matter of finding the sweet spot and finding the right combination between the oscillators and the filter to have the nice uh, and crunchy tonal that you want. Uh, you can also use the flanger ones. <laughs> And yeah, you can have like a shit ton of possibilities using that very technique. It's uh, the way I've been doing kicks for the last six months. And trust me, where back in the days it would take me like ages to have a kick I wanted and have a new tail that would fit better to the track or have a nice intro kick or mid intro kick, should I say. Nowadays, I open one of these projects I've made with that very same technique and I fiddle around with two or three small things and it works wonders. So yeah, I guess I could say that we've made a full kick easily. I think it's possible for anyone to do that because uh, there is no precise frequencies to match for the tail and have the nice distortion and all that. Uh, it's basically just input some sound and see how it works. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, I went back to the original punch that I created earlier and I wanted to also give you some small tips and tricks on how to use these kicks uh, because someone asked me how do I pitch the kicks and stuff to make them sound good. I just use my kick pitching project that I gave out whenever I did the last and uh, the, the previous kick tutorial is still available on my Gumroad for free or you can give a small tip uh, whenever you uh, take it but yeah it's in the description go check it but here yeah I went back to this I will uh, basically just sample the kick so on the master I set up an Edison I will make it play and uh, one thing I always do is like check the overall uh, waveform and I can see a few problems here like uh, I can see the transient a bit too much and like not enough of the tonal and you can see the punch too much and it's not loud enough compared to the tail. So what I can do already is I think I will increase the volume of the global punch because now it will like enter the clipping here, uh, not here, here and it will sound a bit different but not too much, but it will overall have a better uh, waveform. There we go. So it's nice and sturdy now. And yeah, I think it's basically it. That's all I wanted to do here. Like we have a nice waveform for the kick, in my opinion. Uh, if you want, you can fine tune it to your own liking, but we have this. Maybe the transient is a bit too loud, so we'll reduce it. Important to sometimes like loop this uh the sound maybe i should go and uh something like this actually no the transient was not too loud it's just good enough yeah that's good enough like that so yeah that's one thing if uh the overall shape like if it sounds good when you listen to the uh, kick, but when you see the waveform a bit weird like we had before, cranking up the volume of the overall punch can help like uh, make everything nice and tight. 
next thing I can give you as a tip is um, if you want to pitch that kick, the thing I would keep for the pitching is here the tail itself. So uh, I should probably rename all of that properly. Uh, yeah, let me insert one row here on top, select all of these and uh, to, 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 to group with above track. Where is that thing here? We name that tail and uh, yeah, so I will only keep the tail. I will not keep anything from uh, the punch, so not even the punch reverb, but we do not need that in the uh, the tail that we want to pitch because basically uh, that would create a weird sensation whenever you pitch it because that's supposed to be the reverb of the punch and the punch is not pitching together with the tail so that's the thing we can remove and I will remove this I will just keep the transient and the tail so we have this that's all we need to pitch uh, the rest is not useful uh, in that scenario why do I keep the transient? It's just so you know exactly uh, where the kick start and you just sample that and then run it through the kick pitching project and it will work as long as you've put it on the G and or use whatever other technique you have to pitch it. But that's, that's the way I would pitch it. Uh, also, then you might uh, wonder what I do for the punch. Usually I would, if it's just for like a mid intro kick, I would export everything like that like everything uh, together like the punch and the, the the reverb of the punch uh but if it's for a climax kick sometimes what i like to do is just have the punch alone so i would like get rid of the the tail just have this so that i have everything i need for layering in the uh, final project where i pitch the kick meaning have all the keys and then you have the punch with its reverb and sometime depending on the track i might not even like export the reverb and redo the reverb on the spot to have like the exact shape i want for the uh reverb itself but yeah basically uh i would export usually i export one full version of the kick so everything together then i would export only the tail with uh, no, just this with the transient to be able to pitch it if I wanted and then I would also export only the punch so I would delete uh, this only the punch like that and sometime also the punch without the reverb so that I have all the separate part I need for me to be able to work with that uh, kick without opening the project like uh, on the fly and the last tip I can give you is like as soon as you have one good transient and one good uh, low end punch, so basically you can do that with these two uh, thingies, what you can do is sample that and reuse that. Whenever you want to make a kick, you do not have to create a new transient and a new uh, low end punch. You can just reuse that thing. And uh, that's basically what I've done. I've sampled that thing together and I reuse that every single, in every single kick making I make, I use the same transient and the same low end and it works. So yeah, that's some tips I uh, can give you. One last tip if I can say, is sometime uh, you might want to go here on the second tab, uh, NFL Studio, Activate the clip and boost to like 2% or 3% to have like a tighter kick and it will generate some more distortion uh, doing that, like the tail will change again. So sometimes it can be useful. And the very last tip I can give you is uh, with that technique and all of uh, that setup, uh, you've probably heard at least once in your life one of these pogo kick, as we call them, like the, the ones with the pitch of the tail going down the nice thing is that you can do that naturally in serum by just changing this shape here and now should have kind of a pogo kick so 
So yeah, you can have a pogo kick like that. Or you can make some weirder kick if you wanted, like play around with the, that pitch stuff here. You can do all kinds of weird stuff using this technique. So be my guest and try that. Try different stuff. And that's the point of this project and this tutorial. It's just you have the base now. Try some weird stuff and you'll have some funny kicks to use sometime in some of your tracks. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was useful and I hope I was clear enough um, because it's quite a lot of cover uh, for a tutorial. But normally, once you've done the setup once, you're good to go. One last thing I didn't mention during the tutorial that I kind of forgot is like whenever you make a kick, have a test project ready, like have a mid intro ready for you to use it in and uh, yeah, test the kick and fix it on the go whenever you apply it on your mid intro and see if there are some stuff to fix actually. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching uh, and yeah, if you want the project you can grab it on my Gumroad. I will try to stick this year to, in term of year I would say this season, from September to like uh, September next year, I will try to stick to one tutorial per month. I will try to because it will depend on my uh, life and how it goes, obviously. But yeah, I will try to stick to uh, one video per month, and if I can stick to that, I would be happy already. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm back in business. Uh, as I said in the previous video, I was not there uh, too much because I had a lot of uh, computer problem and blue screen and all that, but everything is fixed now. My computer is uh, fresh. So um, some new tutorials coming your way uh, and yeah. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.